going on, family? I'm trying to get this brother out here for some time, you know what I mean? So, um, I'm definitely glad to have him out here. I ain't never done this before. It's my first time doing this, but um, I know what it is out here in downtown with our people all over the place, you know what I mean? So, um, when I go on YouTube and I see the brother's videos, I feel it. You know what I mean? I got a daughter. You know what I mean? I know what it was like when I was growing up, and it, it got to change. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna change it unless we do it ourselves. But they, they damn sure ain't gonna do it. So, uh, I wanna introduce this brother here. You know what I mean, he, he going hard. I know it was the auction, what, today or something like that. So, um, there you go. Right. I want to thank everybody for coming out, spend some time this evening. And I do believe that it will benefit you. Number one, if you're a parent. Number two, if you work with children. Number three, if you care about children. So that should basically include everybody in the room. My name is Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm a doctor of clinical psychology, and I'm a certified school psychologist here in Pennsylvania. Tonight's presentation is going to be very intimate because, number one, we have a small enough group where we can conversate along the way. A lot of times when I speak, it's hundreds of people. But this is intimate enough for us to be able to have a dialogue. So when I'm going through this information, if you have a question, stop. We don't have to save questions to the end. We can do it as we go. I want to make sure you understand what I'm going over because if you're ever in a position where you need to protect your own child, or help someone else protect theirs, you'll know exactly what the law is and how to apply it. We're going to talk about special education, which is school psychology, and we're also going to talk about ADHD and the disruptive behavior disorders, which is clinical psychology. I'm actually trained in both, so I do clinical work and I do school work. I want you to understand the commonalities, but I also want you to understand the differences. They are not the same. Clinical psychology is regulated by the American Psychiatric Association, or should I say the American Psychological Association, but the diagnoses we use come from the American Psychiatric Association. If you're a psychologist, you call ADHD a psychological disorder. If you're a psychiatrist, which is a licensed medical doctor, then you will call them a psychiatric disorder. Okay, so that's one thing I want you to know. A psychiatric disorder and a psychological disorder are usually the same thing. It depends on who's saying it. I'm not a psychiatrist, so for me it's a psychological disorder. If I was standing next to a psychiatrist, they would call it a psychiatric disorder because we use the same book to diagnose, okay? Special education was created, invented, by the United States Congress in 1975. Public Law 94-142 gave birth to special ed. When it was created, I'm going to do a little writing as well as some PowerPoint to make sure I drive my points home tonight. Okay. So, Public Law 94-142 gave birth to the Education for All Handicapped Children Act. This is America's first special ed law. There was no national special ed law before 1975. I'm a 1974 baby. I'll be 40 in August, so special education is 39 years old this year. Some of you may be older than special ed. Some of our grandparents have no recollection of special ed because it didn't exist, okay? However, individual states, individual states, some of them already had a state controlled special ed program, okay? So some of you might say, well, my grandma was a special ed. She might have been in her state, but there was no federal program yet, okay? The federal program comes in 1975, and it basically said what? That if your child had a disability, they had a right to two things. Understand these two things, because all special education lawsuits are fought over these two things. 
Every complaint you have as a parent, if your child is in special ed, must be related to one or the other of these two things. One of them is FAPE. The other one is LRE. I do a lot of work with educational lawyers. When they sue school districts for violating children's rights, the child been in special ed for 10 years, still can't read, that's a legal issue. The child is in special ed and only needs special ed for reading, but the Allentown public school system has your child in special ed all day, that's a legal issue. They want to expel your child from school and the child is in special ed and the school did nothing to address the behavior problem, they can't do it. It's a legal issue. Your child needs certain services as a student with a disability. The school district isn't giving them to them. That's a legal issue. So I do a lot of corrective evals. I'm the guy, the lawyers call and say, look, this kid was evaluated and diagnosed by an Allentown school psychologist with mental retardation, which is now called intellectual disability. President Obama renamed it in 2009. So they'll call me and they say, we need to know whether or not this African-American kid, this Latino kid, and in some cases, this white kid, whether he was misdiagnosed or not. I come in and I retest the children. Come on. I come in and I retest the children who are already tested to see if the diagnosis was legitimate or not. Which tip? Yeah, that wasn't me. I don't know who's better. Which takes me to my next... fact of the evening, and that is what? Every diagnosis we give, every single diagnosis we give is a professional opinion. It is not a fact. I take issue with some of you parents because you treat these professional opinions as facts, and you limit your child's ability to learn based on somebody else's opinion that cannot be objectively proven. Learning disability is an idea. You cannot prove it. ADHD, which is nonsense in my opinion, is an idea. You can't prove that either. Mild mental retardation, emotional disturbance, you cannot prove those. So when we look at our children being in special education, especially children of color, black boys in particular, most of them are being miseducated by way of a diagnosis that can't even be proven to exist. No blood scan, no urine sample, no x-ray, no MRI can tell me whether or not this beautiful little girl right here has ADHD. Now, the teacher might say, well, she's too hyper. She doesn't pay enough attention. I would argue that's what kids do at that age. I would also argue that we might need to screen her for mental giftedness because a lot of mentally gifted kids are being misdiagnosed with ADHD because the teacher too damn boring to keep their attention. Just going to give it to you straight. Okay? Now, free and appropriate public education. If your child has a disability, they have a right to a free education. You don't pay for it. The kid is autistic, blind, deaf, learning disabled, whatever the issue is, you do not pay for the education, it is free. The P means, excuse me, the A means it must be appropriate. That's the controversial concept. Who decides whether or not the special ed program is appropriate? That's the argument. You say my child been in special ed for 10 years, still can't read, there's no way in hell that was appropriate. School district comes back and say, we think it was appropriate, why? Because that kid comes late to school every day. And he's reading disabled. And he misses half a reading class every morning because he's late. The parent never shows up for report card conference. She cannot be rich for IEP meetings. He never does his homework. He doesn't pay attention in class. Yeah, it's true he can't read, but it ain't our fault. The child doesn't come to school with any interest in learning how. So most special ed cases are fought over who gets the blame. The school is going to try to make it your fault. I'm going to tell you right here, right now, if you're a lazy parent, you will always lose. If you're a parent who's not involved in your child's education, you will always lose. They will be. If they can prove that you are neglectful of that child's education, irrespective of what they did or didn't do, you will lose. Because the stereotype already is, 
that the poor and parents of color aren't as interested in their child's education as others. Which is why the first thing you have to do is you got to be involved. You won't be able to stand up for your child's rights if you're not involved. Most of us are not involved. A lot of us have our paperwork poorly organized. Parents call me if my child doesn't need special ed, but they're telling me my child does need special ed, I need your help. Has your child been evaluated yet? Yes. When was he put in special ed third grade? What grade is he in now? Ninth. Well, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, special ed child must be evaluated every three years. So if your child went into special ed in the third grade and he's down to ninth, he's been evaluated three times. I need to see the three evaluations. I don't have them. How the hell can I help you? You need to have your son's paperwork. Stop being sloppy. You cannot help your child if you're sloppy. Most of the times, when parents go to due process against the school district, you're normally correct in your argument. The school is miseducating your child. But because you're sloppy and don't have your paperwork and don't keep good notes, they win. And I'll tell you right now what they do in Pennsylvania. You come into the meeting, and just so y'all know, when I talk about due process, I want to make sure you know what due process means. Due process is your right as a parent to sue the school district. But you don't sue them in regular court. You sue them by way of a due process hearing. Every state in America has people who are not judges, who are given legal authority to determine the outcome of special education lawsuits. Due process officers, school psychologists, retired principals, lawyers, retired teachers, they could be anybody that the state feels is knowledgeable enough about special ed and honest enough to tell the truth about what's going on. And that's who they send to Allentown to hear your complaints against the school. Hypothetically, let's say I'm a hearing officer. Hypothetically, let's say this is a school building. This is your child's school. I got a due process complaint from you. It was given to me by Harrisburg, Bureau of Special Ed. There's a mother and father down in Allentown who are disgusted because the child goes to a certain elementary school and the child been in special ed for years and they feel the school has not been educating their child. They feel the education is not appropriate. So they send Dr. Johnson to Allentown will come into a classroom in your child's school. It's very informal, but it's formal. And it'll be a table like this. And you'll be here as the parent. And then the teacher and the principal and the school district lawyers will be here. And I read through your case and I ask you, why are you here? What is your problem? My job is to try to mediate between the parent and the school district. That's the first thing. Mediation. Can we rectify this without somebody getting in trouble one way or the other? Because schools can take you to due process too. They rarely do it, because most of the time they're in the wrong. It's normally you taking it, but they can do it as well. And so you come in and you tell them your argument. My child been in special ed six years, still can't read. And I want Allentown Public Schools to pay for Raheem to go to an approved private school at Allentown Public School District expense, because according to federal special ed law, Remember, special ed is federal. This comes from the White House. This comes from Congress. It is federal. So when schools violate it, they are breaking federal law, not just local. I need you to understand that. Okay? So, under federal special ed law, if you can prove that Allentown Public Schools or Harrisburg or Philadelphia or any place in America, okay, the special ed is national. <laughs> If you can prove that that school district is not appropriately educating your child, if you can prove it to me at a due process hearing, okay, and they'll probably never let me be a hearing officer because I am an aggressive advocate for parents and children. So they would probably consider me biased. They probably think I would never rule on the behalf of the district. And they're right. Because <laughs> districts are full of shit. Excuse my French. So you make your argument, and then the school district's lawyers make their argument, and then I go home for about a week, just like a judge, but I'm a hearing officer, I'm not a judge, but I'm given legal power to decide the outcome of special ed cases. 
We come back in a week and I'll give you my decision. With all due respect, I do think the school district was negligent in properly educating your special ed child. However, your notes are terrible. You have almost no proof to justify your claims. The school says they can never get in contact with you. Your child barely comes to school. He never does homework. He's a damn terror in the building. And so although the school was negligent, I find you more negligent. So my decision is that we're going to allow Allentown Public Schools another opportunity to fix this problem, to begin to properly educate your child. And if they don't, between now and the end of the school year, I'm giving you the right to resubmit your due process complaint against Allentown Public School again. Everybody follow me? Now, if you end up having to come back a second time, you're probably going to win. Remember, if you can prove that the school district is not properly educating your child who has a disability, you can make them pay for that child to go to a private school. I help parents do it all the time. I help them in Lower Marion, Upper Marion, Chester, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, all over the country. It's easy to do if you have your paperwork. That's right. He's in the ninth grade, can't read, you've been coming to the meetings, he comes to school on time, he does his homework, you've been regularly expressing your complaints. That's another thing. A lot of y'all do too much talking, you gotta write. You can talk, but then follow up with a letter. You need to have documentation that I've complained about my child's IEP 10 times this year. If all you got is verbiage, you're gonna lose because educators suffer from what I call academic amnesia. That's when they will walk into a meeting and swear up and down that they didn't say exactly what they did say. They lie on purpose. How do you know this? Because I'm a school psychologist. How do you know this? I'm a certified school principal. How do you know this? I'm a former school administrator. I know what we do. I'm not a liar. I'm not into that. But a lot of principals I work with are liars. Teachers will lie too to protect their butt and protect their job. So you need to make sure you have your documentation in order. But yes, you can make them pay for your child to go to an approved private school. If you go to the State Department of Education website, Harrisburg, if you go to the Bureau of Special Ed, there's a list you can print out of Pennsylvania approved private schools. If you win in due process and you prove that your child's school failed to properly educate him given his disability, and the due process and the due processing officer says, you know what? Y'all neglected this kid. He'd been a specialist since kindergarten, still can't read, he's not retarded. Inexcusable. Y'all paying for that child to go to a private school. Then you gotta go to the list and select the school you want your child to go to. But you have to do your homework ahead of time. You should come to the hearing knowing what school you want the child to go to. Because you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna send you to the cheapest one. So you should have already downloaded the list, you should have already went to their websites, you should have already physically took a trip out to the school to see where you think your child will best be served. $30,000 a year school, your child's go for free, door to door service, because you are on your job. A lazy parent is no parent at all. And too many parents are lazy. I'm just gonna call it like I see it. Yeah, the schools miseducate, but so do you. Schools neglect the children, but so do we. And then we come over here. So, faith is the first law. The education must be free. Let me go back to that. I'm hearing special that parents tell me that I asked the principal if my son could be in that special after school reading program. And she told me that that program was $50 a week. Your child has an IEP? Yes. That means they're a student with a disability. Yes. That means they're in special ed. Yes. IEP, student with a disability, special ed are one and the same. If you have an IEP, you're a student with a disability, you're in special ed. If you're in special ed, you're a student with a disability, and you have an IEP. There's no such thing as an IEP without being in special ed, because you don't get an IEP because IEP is special ed. Make sure you understand that. Some parents say, well, my child got an IEP, but he's not in special ed. Yes, he is. It's just that your son's placement in special ed happens to be his regular ed classroom. Special ed is not a place, it's a program. You can stay in a regular class, you're still special ed, you still got an IEP. The school is still getting paid from Obama and Harrisburg to special educate that child. Because I need y'all all to understand that special ed is a business. Special ed is a hustle. 
Special ed is a racket. Special ed is a crime, often, that districts partake in by special educating kids who they know that they previously miseducated and they get paid. In, Phil in, in, in Pennsylvania, special ed child is worth twice as much as a regular ed child. What am I talking about? Everybody here is in fifth grade for the sake of the conversation. Everybody here is in the fifth grade. And everybody sitting over here was diagnosed correctly or incorrectly with one of the 13 special ed disabilities, which we'll go over in a minute. Once I put y'all in special ed, whether you're in special ed full-time or whether you stay in a regular class, you have an IEP, you're still special ed. Everybody over here, Allentown Public School, regular school students, Allentown Penn spends $8,000 a year to educate a child, they're in special ed. They're not worth $8,000 anymore. They're worth $16,000. The special ed kids are twice the money. This is important for y'all to know. This is why a lot of kids go into special ed, especially the black and Latino boys that never come the hell out because to take you out means I'm cutting money out my budget. You're talking to a school administrator here. I know, it, I know how this goes. When I worked for the school district of Philadelphia, when I used to do my practicums in Lancaster School District, you know what they do? At the end of the year, they call all the school psychologists in and ask you for a complete list of every child that you evaluated because they want to make sure they didn't miss out on any money because they forgot to put your child's name in the system and send it to Obama. So I sit down, I evaluate your child. I say he got a reading disability. His name goes into the computer. It goes to Harrisburg. Harrisburg sends it to D.C. And by the end of the month, an electronic transfer of funds is sent. It's called miseducation welfare. So, your son is in the second grade. He's been misdiagnosed with a reading disability. First of all, I have a problem with that. Why? Because if your son or daughter is in the first, second, or third grade, why in the hell are you giving permission for somebody to diagnose a child that young? I'm going to blame you for that. Because you don't have to be a school psychologist to know that six years old is too damn young to be diagnosing a child with a reading disability. He ain't been in class long enough to learn how yet. And some of us like to misdiagnose as much as the schools do. Because it's an excuse not to be a parent. It's not a discipline problem. He has ADHD. No, he don't. There's an absence of discipline in your home disorder. That's what he got. That's the ADHD. Ain't no daddy at home disorder. ADHD. That's his problem. And then we go and dope him up on Ritalin, Adderall, Concerta, Cycler, Metadine, and the list goes on. Drugs that are pharmacologically no different than the illegal drugs that sent his father to jail. How hypocritical can you be to say that we don't want people dealing drugs and you locking up black and Latino men by the thousands, give them mandatory minimum sentences of five years for five ounces of crack, but you'll take that same crack, call it Ritalin, and give it to a son. It's the same side effects. Anything I say today, you don't believe it, you go research it. Most of the information you're going to hear for the first time because most school psychologists ain't going to tell you what I'm telling you because I work for myself and they work for the system. The Drug Enforcement Agency classifies Ritalin as a Schedule II drug. That means Ritalin is just as addictive as cocaine and opium. If you don't believe me, go to the public library, take out the DEA classification of drugs, and see where Ritalin is. And this is what you give to your son on a daily basis because you're too lazy to raise him right. And by the time he's 21, he's walking around with permanent brain damage, studded growth, diabetes, epilepsy, psychotic disorders, delusional disorders, heart problems, blood cancer. Because mommy and daddy didn't want to raise me, so they put me on pills. It's called being a boy. Since when is being a boy a damn disease? You have to teach him discipline. He's a male child. Raise him. Stop letting people 
pathologize and criminalize him. I know kids three years old on three or four different drugs. At three. Barely started walking, but he can get high. And who benefits? Wall Street drug companies. $32 billion a year off child psychiatrics alone. Not including the ones y'all take. Xanax and everything else. Beaming up every damn day. Because you lack the willpower to face your own personal psychological demons. You do know that's the root of addiction. Whether it's food addiction. Shopping addiction. My ladies. Sex addiction. Marijuana. Alcohol. Cigarettes. What do they all have in common? Somebody who don't want to face their issues, so they're just going to keep putting a Band-Aid on. And because the alcohol is not sufficient to drown away your problems, because once you come down off that drunkenness, all the problems are still there. So what do you do? Get drunk again. And again. And again. And so now you have a habit that you're too weak to break. That's the devil right there. When you get to God, you got to go through the devil. Most of us ain't got the willpower to go through the devil to get to God. Peace is on the other side of that addiction. But are you ready to man up to go through your pain to get to peace? People go to therapy for 20, 30 years. What the hell are you doing in therapy for 30 years? You are addicted to the therapist. 30 years? Then you find some people who end up giving a therapist therapy. <laughs> you treat them. I'm serious about that. Do you know what the number one cause of a psychologist being stripped of their license in the United States of America? Number one cause of psychologists in America losing their license. And you can look at the American Psych Psych Psychological Association monitor, the monthly newsletter. You know what they put on the back of that newsletter? I think they do it, I don't know if they do it every month, but they do it every year or quarterly. A list of all the psychologists who were banned and why. And guess what's the number one reason that psychologists lose their license? Having sex therapy with their patients. How the hell are they going to help you when they the hell sick? Getting back over here. Least restrictive environment says... Your child should not be in special ed absolutely any longer than what is required for him to learn. Let me give you an example. Your daughter got a math disability. She has a math disability. So that means she should only be in special ed for what subject? Math. But you told me your daughter's in special ed all day. She's in a special ed class all day. So if she only has a math disability, but she spends 100% of her day with the special ed students, she is being miseducated. That is illegal. They are violating least restrictive environment provision. Dr. Umar, my son, is in special ed for ADHD, which he shouldn't have done in the first place, but okay. How does your son do academically? He's good. He's one of the smartest kids in the school. So what is he in special ed for? Well, because they say, you know, he got trouble sitting still. Excuse me. You don't go to special ed because you have trouble sitting still. You go to special ed because you have a problem learning. If your son has ADHD and he does not have a problem learning, he doesn't go to special ed. He gets a behavior plan, a 504 accommodation plan. And we're going to talk about 504. Talk about it right now. Free and appropriate public education. It must be free, it must be appropriate to meet your child's learning needs. Least restricted environment. Your child should not be in special ed any longer than what is necessary in order for them to learn. I'm willing to bet right now that half the black and Latino boys in Allentown are being over special educated. I know this because I know Pennsylvania. Why do they have your children in special ed more than what is necessary for them to learn? Because your child never had a learning disability in the first place. Do you know why they put your child in special ed? Because the teacher didn't want to be bothered with his ass. So they threw him away to special ed jail. And because he's only in there because the teacher don't want him in the class. It doesn't benefit the teacher if he's only gone for one period. So they stick him in there all day. Special ed jail. Okay? They don't let him out the class do that. He go to recess with the special ed kids. He go to gym with the special ed kids. They even make him go to the bathroom with the special ed kids. They even bring him his lunch so he ain't got to be seen by nobody. Total segregation. 
And because special ed is legal segregation, you have to control how much you segregate the special kids from the regular kids. There's only a few children who you can justify full segregation for. Who are they? The blind kids. They blind all day. They got to be in blind school all day. Deaf kids. They're going to be deaf all day. Serious and profound autism. That's all day. Traumatic brain injury. That's all day. Serious and profound mental retardation. They may need special ed all day. Learning disability. A glow in the dark. GI Joe disorder. Emotional disturbance. Ain't no daddy to home. These nonsense disorders. You can't justify special ed for no nonsense disorder all day. But let's talk about 504. 504 versus IEP. And then I'm going to take some questions before I go further. 504 versus IEP. Your child was diagnosed with ADHD. First of all, your child was not diagnosed with ADHD by Allentown Public School because school psychologists don't diagnose ADHD. Let me say it one more time. When I work in the schools, I do not diagnose for that. That is a mental disorder that must be diagnosed at a clinic or a hospital. It cannot be diagnosed in school. It is not a learning disability. Are y'all following me? So if your child is a special ed for ADHD, I already know you done messed up. Because that tells me you took your child somewhere to get tested. He got diagnosed with ADHD. And you came back to the school with the report and told the school that your son was diagnosed with ADHD by somebody else which allowed the school to then special educate. We don't diagnose ADHD, but if you bring that information into the school, we can't use it against the child. So you have to learn to stop talking so damn much. You tell all your business to the school. The school is not your friend. The school is the new prison. And just like cops, teachers are the new probation officers. And anything you say can and will be used against you and your child. That's right. The son on concern, you stop giving him the medicine because he started talking to himself and hearing crazy noises. I'm not giving my son that medicine no more. Problem is, you told the school you was giving him the medicine in the first place. And now he tells his teacher, my mommy don't give me that no more because they had me going crazy. And the teacher called Child Protective Service. And they come knocking on your door. Yes, we're here from the city. You got a phone call from the principal, your child's school, he was diagnosed with ADHD, you stopped giving him the meds, they feel he needs the meds. Yeah, I'm not giving my son those meds. Was it a psychiatrist that's going to take the medicine? Because if the psychiatrist didn't discontinue the medicine, you have no right to do it yourself. You're being charged with medical neglect. And we're taking your child. And we're not just going to take the child who was diagnosed with ADHD. We're taking all the kids because you've been deemed unfit to raise any of them. This is why I tell you all to slow down with this medicine, this, medicine, this medicine thing. Excuse me. Stop doing it. They can't make you put your child on medicine. But once you put them on medicine, they can force you to keep them on or take them away from you. Special ed. They cannot force you to put your child on special ed. In the state of Pennsylvania, you cannot force a parent to put their child on special ed. That is the law in the Commonwealth. All 501 school districts, all 67 counties of Pennsylvania, you cannot make a child put their child, a parent put their child on special ed. So if I see any child on special ed who don't belong there, it's your fault. I'm going to blame you and the school because y'all partners in this miseducation thing. I cannot test your child without your permission. So don't tell me the school put my son in special ed. No, you did, because I can't put him in special ed until you sign your name on the paper. I cannot test him until you sign your name on the paper. He cannot be evaluated for ADHD until you sign your name on the paper. You are complicit in the miseducation. Your child is diagnosed with ain't no daddy at home disorder. And you want to decide whether or not he needs a 504 or an IEP. IEP is special ed. That means the problem must affect his ability to learn. You can only go to special ed if the problem affects your ability to learn. If the problem doesn't affect your ability to learn, special ed cannot even be considered. Is everybody with me? Your child has ADHD. It's not affecting his ability to learn. So IEP is not an option because you just told me the boy is a BC student. He's not in danger of failing nothing, so special ed can't even enter the conversation because he's not disabled. But Dr. Umar, the teacher complaining, he can't sit still, can't pay attention. Yeah, he's smart, but he's disordered. Special ed is not for the disordered. Special ed is for the learning disabled. So we have to come to 504. 504 is a law that comes from the Americans with Disabilities Act. 
It says if a child has a disability and needs accommodations, not learning modifications, special ed, you modify the curriculum. Special ed, you modify the learning. Special ed, you dumb down the instruction. Is everybody with me? When a child goes to special ed, you are dumbing down his learning. Period. Which means he ain't likely to graduate on grade level. Which means he ain't going to get a regular diploma in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Something the principal is never going to tell you, so I hope you just heard it. Sticking your kids in special ed in 2014 Pennsylvania is going to get them out of school without a diploma. Because we got the Keystone exam coming up in two years, and I'm going to get to that in a second. A test that they made specifically to funnel black and Latino boys into prison. We'll get to that in a second. Okay? Hold on. I'm going to come to you in one second. So with the 504, the child needs what? Accommodations. With the IEP, the child needs learning modification. 504, he doesn't need an easy curriculum. He's sharp. He don't need you to dump down the learning. He can do just as well as everyone else in the class. But what he does need is regular breaks because he's ADHD. What he does need is a behavior plan because he's ADHD. What he does need is extra time to take his tests because he's ADHD. What he does need is regular meetings with the school counselor to review his behavior because he's ADHD. But are we touching his learning? No. Are we touching his curriculum? No. Are y'all following me here? 504, my child needs supports. He doesn't need learning modifications. Question. Why would an IEP? Yeah, we need it. We had, I had a situation where my child had a medical disability. And yet he had a father's work in an IEP. You can have both. I believe it's overkill. Why? Because on an IEP, you can list all the accommodations. Right? Anything on a 504 can be put on the IEP accommodation page. So I don't see a need for two unless you feel the school isn't going to uphold the agreement, because the IEP is a legal agreement between the school and the parent and the district. If you feel the school is going to cut corner, I would get a separate 504. Why would I get a separate 504? Remember we talked about due process? You can take the district to due process. And you can sue for comp ed. You don't get money. You get money put in an account that your child can use later. But you don't get no cash payout. 504 doesn't fall under special ed. That's civil rights law. If they violate your son's 504, you get a regular lawyer, you sue in regular court, and you can get a paycheck. Can everybody hear that? 504, you go straight to the regular judge, the regular court, because your child's civil rights are being violated. He's being discriminated against for his disability. My son got ADHD and they suspended him like he's crazy. They can't do that. He has protections. 504 protections. You can't keep suspending him. I'm suing. Now, most of us have been led to believe that the IEP is stronger than the 504. Nope. 504 is stronger. Civil rights laws are a whole lot stronger than special ed law. Most parents don't know that. And why don't schools tell you about 504? Some of y'all might say, I never heard of a 504. They just wanted to put my kid in special ed. Why didn't the school tell you about 504? It's about money. I already told you when we put a kid in special ed, the school gets twice the money. When you put a kid on a 504, they don't get a penny. So schools don't tell you about 504 because there's no money in it. Education today is not about educating children. It's about making money off their misery. Question. Yes, sir.
think, of administrative segregation. Yes. And you made a very valid point earlier, I think, uh, about you know how they're dealing with what's the identity and black and Latino children in front of the prison. Uh, Let me speak to it. Mm -hmm. Let me speak to it. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. They segregate each other. Yes. Because as I said earlier, the teacher wouldn't want to be bothered with y'all, so they put you in a separate place. Yes. That was illegal. Because the law says what? Least restrictive environment. Unless they can justify why you got to be separated from the rest of the children, your parents could have sued. Problem is, a lot of our parents don't know the law. That's why I'm here today to introduce y'all to special ed law and regular ed law. And if you're interested, you have the opportunity to purchase my book on the back table, Psychoacademic Holocaust, The Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys. It's the only book ever written by a black school psychologist that teaches parents how to fight back against the school when they try to special educate or medicate unnecessarily. You see? And it's a shame because when we look at school psychology as a profession, 99% of all school psychologists in this country are something other than Latino and African American. That means most of the people who are testing our children don't understand their culture. I'm not going to say they are out to get our children, but they're not culturally familiar. How is that relevant? If one of these young men come to me and I got to do an evaluation, the minute he sits down in front of me, I know if he's going to give me his best. I know if he's BSing me. I know if he's lazy. I know if he's having a bad day. Why do I know? Because I used to be. I understand the nonverbal cultural communication. You understand? So I'm going to say, I'm not testing him today. Well, why not? Because I know he ain't ready. If I test that boy today, his IQ score is going to come up so low, he's going to look retarded and he's not. You see? Because I understand the culture because I'm in it. But if I don't understand the culture, I might think he did do his best. And I misdiagnosed that boy's retarded. He wasn't retarded. He was lazy. Y'all following me? And that's why in the United States of America, a black and Latino boy is four times as likely as a white child to be misdiagnosed as retarded today. Which is why if you ever get an evaluation for a kid and someone is calling them retarded, I don't care what color the child is. I fight to protect a child no matter what color they is. I work with my white parents too. If you ever get a diagnosis and they say your child is retarded, you're going to fax that to me. I want to see it. Because too often kids are being misdiagnosed and retarded and it's insane. And I'll tell you why not. Because they don't understand the culture of communication. Children are lazy, not putting forth their best effort. They score low on the IQ test. You score in the 70, they're going to start calling you intellectually deficient. Now, the IQ tests are culturally biased against African American and Latino. Most of the language used is middle class, upper middle class European American language. So, what trips our kids up on the testing is the fact they don't understand the words in the question. If they understood the words in the question, they would do well. But as the psychologist evaluating your child, I know. But if I helped him understand what this means, he would get it. But guess what the book says? The test manual says you cannot change the wording of the question. So a child who looks retarded could have easily been mentally gifted, but I'm not allowed to help him understand what the hell they're asking. Me. And this is by design. This is by design. Why are they giving our Pennsylvania children a keystone examination in 20? 17, 2016, first class will have to pass it. I want y'all to understand this. First of all, Pennsylvania spent over $20 million for it, I think. For it to be designed. They said they ain't got enough money for nothing else, but you got $20 million for a graduation test that you know the black and Latino kids from the inner city ain't going to pass because they're not being properly educated. And if you don't pass this test, guess what you get? Not a diploma or something called a certificate of completion. Thank you. A piece of paper, you get a piece of paper that says you came to school for 13 years and didn't pass nothing. You can't use it to get into the army. You can't use it to get into trade school. You can't use it to get into college. That means you have no future. That means you're gonna go to the street corner and participate in the illegal economy, which is gonna send you to Holmesburg or Lancaster or we got down there for the list of big prisons. Gratiford. Rockford. And in Gratiford, they're expanding Gratiford. Gratiford is about to be four times bigger than what it is now. Why? Why is Pennsylvania building four new maximum security prisons? Because they know this test right here is the weapon of mass destruction. They know our boys are not going to pass it, and so they're building jails to catch all the ones who fail it. 
And then some of y'all said, well, can't they take the GED? Let's talk about that. What did we get on New Year's Day? New Year's Day, we got a brand new GED test. There's a new GED test that is just as hard as the Keystone. So if you said, well, my son won't take the GED, if he don't pass the Keystone, you better think again because the GED is the Keystone. <laughs> you see what's going on here? They are engineering crime and failure and poverty at a level you've never seen. I'm going to get to that in a second. What do we do about it? But let me finish. It. Hold that thought. The child is going to be given 10 tests. Five will be math and science. I want you, and I want you, and I want you, and I want you, I'm going to come to you in a minute, sir. I want y'all to pay attention. Because most of y'all going to have to pass this test. My four young brothers in the back. Playtime's up. It's time to get serious about school. Parents, the damn cell phones, it might be time to get rid of. The video games, it might be time to get rid of. Internet, cable, it might be time to get rid of. And why do I say that? Our children, black, white, purple, are wasting their lives away because they have all these technological distractions. This right here is going to cause him to fail that damn keystone. This iPad is a weapon of mass destruction. That Xbox is a weapon of mass destruction. Our children are spending too much time playing around when they should be reading books. You want to know why the illiteracy rate in Pennsylvania is so low, even for white students? Because they got gadgets now. Before you had to read to entertain. Before there was a television, you read for pleasure. That was the activity. We don't read no more. We got video games and Xboxes and all these dummy down technological devices. And now we fell in these tests. My recommendation, your child shouldn't play video games except on the weekend. Unless they straight A's. If they straight A's, they can play on the week. If they ain't straight A's, you play on the weekend and you don't play all weekend. Because there's something called video game addiction. It's not an official diagnosis yet, but it needs to be. There's a book called PlayStation Nation. You might want to read. They did research that showed that when a child is playing video games, the sections of the frontal lobe that are excited during video game use are the exact same sections of the frontal lobe that are excited on crack cocaine use. So you say, why is that boy acting like he addicted to that game? He is. The excitement of the video game has so drawn in his mind that he becomes one with the machine. And some of your kids won't get up and go to the bathroom. They'll pee on themselves to keep on playing. And some of you have no control over the child, so the minute you go to bed, they act like they sleep, they pop back up, turn the TV on, and you're wondering why he goes to bed at 9 o'clock, but he got bags under his eyes looking like his grandfather. <laughs> he ain't getting no sleep. Some of y'all got to take the video game and lock him up. And let me say this, if you got to take the game or cell phone from your child in order for them to do what they need to do, you ain't got no control. You ain't got no control. Oh, I got to lock the refrigerator up or he'll keep eating. You ain't got no control. And if you're raising a black or Latino boy, what is your mission? Your mission raising a black or Latino boy, because they are American public enemy number one, is to make sure they leave your house with discipline at the age of 21. Self-control. The ability to make themselves do what they don't feel like doing when it got to be done. If a black or Latino boy ain't got self-control, he will fail in this world. Because society is waiting for him to trip up. Please say that again. Emotional self-control, sexual self-control, financial self-control, academic self-control, and my mothers, I love y'all. Y'all doing a good job, y'all doing the best y'all can, but some of y'all a little trifling with raising your sons. And some of y'all spoiling your damn boys to death. He's lazy, he's shiftless, he's nasty, he's arrogant, because his mama made him that. Your son is not your husband, he's your son. You raise him. You don't spoil him. How the hell are you going to spoil a black boy in a society as racist as this one? There will be no silver spoons in his mouth. But you washing his laundry all the time. He ain't never got to do it. You cooking his food all the time. He ain't never got to do it. You 60 years old scrubbing bathroom toilets while he's in the living room sitting on your couch. 
flipping through the cable channels while you slaving for your son. You ain't raising him. You're messing him up. And not only are you messing him up, you're going to mess that girl's life up that he's going to meet. That's right. I'm going to say it here and now. A lot of black and Latino mothers are turning their boys out to be the exact type of man they would never want their daughter to marry. That's right. Ain't that something? Sister's talking about where the good men at. Ain't none because you're raising bad ones. I'm being real. And fellas, some of this is on us because I can't expect a mother to do a perfect job with a boy because it's not natural for a woman to have to raise a male child. So that means all the men in Allentown have to rally around the single mothers and help them out as opposed to just staring at them and watching them make mistakes when you should be on your job helping her with that boy. Until he gets your daughter pregnant, now you want to wring his damn neck. But if you would have played father figure to that young man, he might have never got your daughter pregnant. So that's your fault, your baby girl pregnant. So with the Keystone exam, they're going to get five math and science. They're going to get five social science. History. Civics. It's the Keystone. So it'll be Algebra 1, Algebra 2. Then they're going to have calculus, trig, arithmetic, five math and science. Then over here, language, history, civics, world history, government. Okay? I'm not too worried about that side. A lot of our kids will get that stuff right because they're indoctrinated into the whole George Washington thing, right? This side, I'm scared because black and Latino kids are allergic to math. You don't believe? Take out a math book. They break out into chicken pot. <laughs> and why are our children allergic to math? Because math is the one subject in school that you can't get an A in just by memorizing information. Math is not a robotic skill. You've got to practice it. You got to study it. You got to apply yourself. You can pass science. You can pass history. You can pass language just by memorizing what the hell the teacher said. But with math, it don't work that way. You got to understand the concept and be able to apply it. And this is why homework is so important. So according to the Keystone Law, the child has to pass six of ten subjects. The child has to pass six of ten. If they fail more than four, they don't get a diploma. I want my brothers in the back to hear me. If any of you are graduating, and I know you young ones are, class of 2016 or further, if you fail more than four, you don't get a diploma. Parents, y'all better hear me. Y'all raising these young ones, y'all better hear me. It's a new game. And this ain't just Pennsylvania. The whole country moving towards this. There's 26 states with mandatory graduation exams, and I ain't got to tell you what the black male graduation rate is in them states. And I ain't got to tell you what the mass incarceration rate is in them states either. Why are they doing this, Dr. Umar? And then I'm going to take these three questions I've got and more. Why are they doing it? Why are they giving all these tests? They're testing our kids to death. Why? Because you're no longer needed for the American economy to function. They don't need any of the black and Latino males, and they don't even need half the white males. So we got to come up with ways that we can disenfranchise them so we can blame them for why they not got a job. We can blame them for why they didn't get accepted to college. We can blame them for why they going to jail by cutting off opportunity based on a test score. Now let me ask y'all a question. Because I'm a school psychologist, so this is my expertise. What is the relationship between your child's keystone exam score and their ability to finish college? What is the relationship between your child's SAT score and their ability to finish college? What is the relationship between your LSAT score and your ability to finish law school? What is the relationship between your MCAT score and your ability to finish med school? What was the relationship between my GRE graduate record exam score and my ability to finish my doctorate at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine in Philadelphia? What was the relationship? Zero. Zero. The IQ test has no predictive validity. The Keystone exam has no predictive validity. The PSSA has no predictive validity. LSAT, MCAT, if none of these tests can tell you whether or not this child can be successful, why do they give them in the first place? You know why? Because it is the new Jim Crow sign. Instead of saying colored only, you say a 1,200 score only, a 130 score only. They use the numbers now. 
to keep you out instead of the words. It's the same Jim Crow system, but with the numbers. It's the biggest con game being ran on parents in America, black or white. That when you get that test and you start reading the PSSA, oh, my baby scored below basic. Your baby might have been below basic, but your baby might have been proficient. So how does a proficient child end up with a below basic PSSA? Couple reasons. I gave you one already. The damn language in the questions. Confusing the hell out of kids, that accounts for 25% of the variance. Another 25%, your lazy ass child who rushing through the items, ain't taking their time, could care less if they pass the knock because my mama going to buy me a new pair of Jordans whether I'm flunking or not because that's my mama. That's right. I would argue the biggest cancer amongst American school children, especially black and Latino, they don't value academics. They come to school in daydream, text all day on their phone, why are you sending your child to school with a cell phone for? Some kids need it, but you need to instruct the teacher to take it until the end of the day because some teachers will let them sit there and play on their cell phone. Why? Because if they're busy, they're not getting on my nerves. So get someone to come to my class and play video games on his damn smartphone, I don't care because I ain't got to worry about yelling at them. That's right. They got to deal with your child that if you be quiet, I will allow you to plunk the hell out of my school. I'm telling you what I know, not what I think. I work in schools. I see it every day. But you won't see this on CNN because this is the real story. So, brothers and sisters, one more thing I want to say, then I'm going to go to some questions. I need to get to the PowerPoint. I didn't quote the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but that's all right. Because y'all not too far from me. So maybe what we probably do, and I'll talk to Brother Muhammad about it later, maybe once a month we'll do like a regular lecture series. Y'all can come and we can cover different topics on different things, okay? One thing we need to do, I don't know if we got a sign-up sheet in the back. No, bro. I would like a sign-up sheet because we need to organize the Allentown Independent Parents Association, okay? So we can organize y'all to bring some change in the school. There's a lot you can change if we just come together. Last thing I want to say on this before I go to the questions, and I have to get your hand there, sir. If your child fails any of the 10 Keystone modules, the failing score is converted into a zero. And that zero percentage is averaged in with your child's end of the school year grade, and that will determine what they get on their report card. In other words, they want to make sure he can't pass if he fails. Your child got a 100 perfect A in science. He gets a 59 on a Keystone. The 59 is converted into a what? Zero. Zero plus 100 divided by 2 is a 50. He was a perfect A, but he fell in now. Welcome to the new Pennsylvania. That's why they built another extension on Gratiford. Let me take some questions. I had one over here before I come. Yes, sir. And then you're next. Uh, the keys, the law was passed about five years ago, man. Okay, so now... I'm just scared about this now. Oh, yeah, they don't want to tell you. They told me at the last minute, so you can't fight it. Exactly. So what can we do as a people to, I don't know, for the experience or, or you know, this is crazy. This is real. I mean, I understand the whole concept. I mean, honestly, you know what should happen? It should be a million, pan, a, a million parent, parent march right, at the State happen. Department of Education in Harrisburg to undo it. Right, what I see now on a daily basis with kids, period, and now you, this is getting ready to happen, and the right. jail system is going on, this is really crazy. I mean, they're building buildings and whatnot, but the people are fair. Yes. They're not they're building the people up. Mm -hmm. They're by design. trying to destroy us. Yes. And I'm seeing this more and more, and this right here got me like, oh, oh man, it's off the hook. And you know what's interesting about it? This never made, I don't, I could be wrong because I don't see every paper it's in Pennsylvania. I haven't seen that make the front page of a major paper in the state. But I will say this, there was opposition. There was opposition. Even some of Pennsylvania's all-white school districts, I'm talking upper echelon, opposed it. The Pennsylvania, there's an organization of superintendents of Pennsylvania, they opposed it. The NAACP, 
State Education Conference opposed it. They had opposition. But like one gentleman told me, who was a part of the think tank that created this bill, he said, ain't nothing you can do to stop this because this is a national movement and Obama is behind it. Right. Yes, Obama is a supporter of mandatory graduation. You know, the same black president got danced in the street for six years ago. Who does absolutely nothing for you? Uh huh. Sing now, kumbaya. Keep singing kumbaya. And then when Hillary coming, you can sing kumbaya some more. I don't think she is either. But whoever going in there. But this means that we got to buckle down on the children. Now there is an out. I will come to that in a minute, though. Yes, sir. Because he wants to shut down public schools and turn everybody into charter. And let's talk about that. The charter school hustle and the voucher hustle. Let me qualify because I don't want y'all to get me wrong. I'm not demonizing anyone who has opened a charter school in Pennsylvania. Some people do it for the right reasons. I'm not blaming them for what they didn't know they were being used for, okay? There's other people who open up charter schools for the wrong reasons. A lot of people open up charter schools to get themselves a free paycheck because charter schools equal money. I come to Allentown to open up a charter school, 300 students, 50 staff members. I'm a king of Allentown. I got 50 people who I'm paying salaries to, they gonna do what the hell I want. Mm -hmm. I got 300 kids, that's 600 parents. That means if the governor wants to get elected, the mayor wants to be mayor, I got 600 parents, guess who they got to come and sit down with? A charter school CEO is a power broker. They don't open charter schools to teach. They open up charter schools to increase their personal political power. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna wake y'all up tonight. Y'all been drinking that Kool-Aid! <laughs> Now, what they want to do, they want to turn every public school into a charter school. Check this out. Why do they want to do that? To eliminate public education. There's a national movement to eliminate public education or for a couple of reasons. And somebody said, why do they want to get rid of public education? The first reason is the most obvious. The United States Constitution does not guarantee you or your child the right to learn. So there's a lot of people in this country who want to know why my tax money is going to pay for a service that the Constitution does not deal with. You don't believe me? Go home, look at the Constitution, and tell me where it says you got a right to learn. It's not a constitutional right. You have a Pennsylvania state right to learn. Education is a federal interest, and it is a local school district function. Remember, the feds don't control education. Education is controlled by Harrisburg state senators and state reps. And I ask you, when is the last time you had your state senators and state reps for Allentown in a room like this asking them, what are you doing to make the schools better? You never do. So I'm not going to blame them. I'm going to blame you for your political impotence. The feds only get involved in education when they got the money to pay states to force them to do what they want. Special ed is federal. So you get money if you follow it. No Child Left Behind is federal. You get money if you follow it. J-R-O-T-C is federal. We will pay you if you teach them to be soldiers. Title I is federal. Every federal education program comes with money. That's how they make states do what they want because the federal government ain't really got a hand in education. Obama is the least powerful entity when it comes to education, Harrisburg is. Now how often do you go to the meetings with the state board of education? You know we got a state board of education. They meet on a monthly basis. You hardly see any parents there, black or white. And seeing a black parent there is like seeing an eclipse or something. <laughs> When's the last time I went to the local Allentown Public School District school board meeting? You never go. This is where the decisions are made at, people. And we're not there. That's called disinterest. One other thing. The solution. Brother Muhammad mentioned it earlier. For those of y'all who don't know, there's a historically black college in Lawrenceville, Virginia, called St. Paul's College. 
It was opened in 1888 by a friend of Booker T. Washington named James Solomon Russell. He graduated his last class in June of 2013, and it's been closed since. I'm in the middle of a fundraiser to raise two and a half million dollars to try to buy that school and turn it into a residential academy for African American boys. Latino boys can come too. Most of them are of African descent anyway. Puerto Ricans are black. I know some of them don't know it, but you are. Okay? There was no difference between any of us up until the 1900s. My great grandfather was a Spanish speaking Cuban. Okay? It's the same people. They dropped some of us off in Puerto Rico, taught us Spanish. They dropped some of us off in Jamestown, Virginia, taught us English. It's the same people. And they got Puerto Ricans darker than any black person, and you got black folks lighter than any Puerto Rican. It's the same people being used against each other because of language and a lack of history and knowledge of self. But anyway, I want to open up that school for boys. It's going to be called the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey International Leadership Academy. And then we're going to open up a school for the girls, the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey Academy for the young ladies. It's going to be residential. They will live there. We're going to teach them six key sciences that no school is teaching our children anywhere in this country. The first one is agricultural and agronomical science. That's right. For those of y'all who got them pretty little girls who don't like to get dirty, they're going to have to get dirty. You're going to teach them how to grow fruits and vegetables so they can sustain a life and stop eating this cancerous GMO food that you buy from the supermarket that ain't even real food. Causing cancer and diabetes and most of us are checking out early as hell because the food is filthy. Even if you go to Whole Foods, it ain't Whole Foods. Did you know that? Do you know that they can stamp organic on the package even if it ain't organic? Remember they used to say all natural back in the 80s. They corrupted that. Then they went to 100% raw. They corrupted that. Then they went to organic. Corrupted that. Now they got certified organic. <laughs> and they corrupted that. Can I ask you a question? If the food in Whole Foods, which most of us can't afford anyway because it's too damn expensive, an apple costs you $25. Give me the cancer for twenty five dollars, and then you walk in Whole Foods and they selling watermelons, seedless watermelons. How in the hell can a seedless watermelon be organic if it ain't got no seeds? But y'all wake the hell up. So we're going to teach the children agricultural and agronomical science, so they can learn how to. Test the soil, plant, grow. In order to graduate from our school, they have to be able to grow six fruit, six vegetables in the house. So there's no excuse for not having a yard. This is school that we're building. Then we're going to teach them financial and economic science. By the time they graduate, they will have a business plan for which they'll be approved at a loan, for a loan, at any bank in America. By the time they finish the 10th grade, they will have mastered the real estate market of Pennsylvania, how to buy and flip properties. By the time they've done the 11th grade, they will have mastered Wall Street, stocks, trading, and investments. And not just Wall Street, but the stock market of London, China, South America, and Nigeria. Do so y'all see what we're doing? We're putting our children in a position where even if they don't go to college, they will be a stunning success in the community. Be careful about sending every child to college. Every child don't belong there. The only thing you're guaranteed to get from college is debt to the banks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The colleges in Pennsylvania, including the 14th state, and I'm a product of Millersville, so I'm out with the Cookstown, Edinburgh, sharing over there with the Mansfield. Okay? Okay, I'm familiar with that. So, my point is, tuition at Millersville, my nephew goes there now. He's a sophomore. It's like three times higher than what I went there. I can't even believe it. I said, what you think? I think when I was in Millersville, tuition for the year was less than $10,000. Tuition for the year for him was almost twenty. At Millersville, a state school where the tuition is kept under control. The banks are working with the colleges to put you in debt. You graduate before you get home with your cap and gown on, there's a bill waiting for you. Your first student loan, you ain't even got a job yet. But the interest is running. Do you know there's 2 million African Americans, not even including everybody, the number's much higher. But 
But if you just know an African American or Latino, you got over two million doctors, masters, all to the degrees can't find work in a soup kitchen room with a doctorate degree. Before you got a master's, they said you were underqualified. You went back to college, got a master's, now you overqualified. What the hell is that? <laughs> Can somebody explain to me, if I want to sweep floors at McDonald's to pay the gas bill, what the hell it matter if I got six degrees? See that? The future of America, black or white, we belong to those who can make their own way. If all you want to do is sit on the couch so they can get a little diploma, so they can go look for a job, they done. Entrepreneurship, if we're going to teach it from that age, she will understand the science of working for thyself. What's the third science? Nutritional, dietary, and medical science. We're going to teach them how to take care of the body. We're going to teach them the science of herbology and naturopathic medicine. That you ain't got to get an aspirin. There's herbs you can take and boil and drink that, and that'll get rid of the problem. We are addicted to the drug culture. You don't give your body time to fix nothing. You get a little ache, and you're at the aspirin already. You're supposed to give your immune system some time to kick in. Most of our immune systems are lazy. Because we keep using pills that over time they're not used to working, so they just stop working. Give your body time. For our teenage girls, we want to have a midwifery and a doula program that teach them how to deliver babies. Look at that. So they graduate from high school, they could be a licensed doula and a midwife. They could go around delivering people babies. You know what people charge to deliver a baby in your house? That can go anywhere from $5,000 to $25,000. Without college. What do you do for a living, young man? I trade stock. What, you have an MBA? No, I didn't need that. My high school taught me how to make money in the stock market. While all my friends was in college studying Shakespeare, I was making my first million. <laughs> Self-employment. That's what we teach it. So we got medical science. We got financial science. We got agricultural science. We also gonna have science of the family and community because we got a big black male female relationship problem. And we gotta teach the girls how to treat the men and teach the men how to treat the women because we have lost it. Too many of our men have sexually objectified the black woman as an object and no longer a person. We gotta fix that. We wanna teach them how to come into a black community and build it up from the ground up. How to organize people, how to build institutions. Teach them the first thing you build is not a church but a bank. So people have access to wealth to build up the infrastructure of the neighborhood. Church, 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 church. Anybody see the documentary on the Korean takeover, the black hair carriage? The brother went to the uh, Korean wholesaler of wig, wig and perm. And he tried to get a, a, a wholesale deal. This is a good Korean too. He said, no, we don't do business with y'all. You buy retail. Better yet, why don't you stick to building churches? That's what y'all do. Lead a business to everybody else. That's black people's reputation. Selling Jesus without putting no jobs in the room. I ain't got a problem with the religion. I'm a descendant of pastors. I come from church family. I ain't got no problem with the church. But the pastors I descend from, they were community building men. Not this new pimp thing where I'm going to live off poor people's money and sell them a life after death. If I got to die in order to get heaven, you can keep your religion. I want mine now. <laughs> Jesus said the kingdom of God is near and now, but he's telling you you got to die first. He didn't have to die. You see his Mercedes is shined up. He didn't have to die, did he? He eating at the finest restaurant. He's telling you to wait till you die to get to heaven, and he already got it on your check. That's right. Damn, peps. That's right. <laughs> so, that takes me to the next science we're going to teach. African spirituality and cosmology. We're going to teach our children. We will respect their religion, whatever it is, and we will teach it to them so they understand it in a respectful fashion. But we're going to teach them the traditional science of ancient Kemet, Nigeria, we're going to teach them Makumi and Kalo. We're going to teach them the sciences of Bugun. 
which has been corrupted by Hollywood and turned into devil worship. That's the original traditional worship of the Most High God. We're going to make sure they understand traditional African mysticism, from which all your religions come in. Nothing wrong with the religions. I was raised Muslim. I come from a Christian side on my mom's side, Muslim side on my dad's side. My grandmama Jehovah Witness, my uncle the guy in earth. I grew up with everybody. Damn! All right, well, I'm a psychologist. These people was great. I'm kidding. But, um, so we're going to give, and then we're going to give political and military side. We're going to make sure they understand the world that they live in. Very important that they understand. Why is Africa the richest continent minerally, but the people in the poorest condition? More gold, more diamonds, more coltan, more silver than any other place on earth, and they can really find a minute. We got to talk about that. Who keeps them in that fashion? International Monetary Fund and the World Bank that keeps Africa destitute by imposing all these economic sanctions if they want loans from the West. We want to teach them how the world operates. While black women lead America in abortions. What's up with black women in abortion? More abortion than any other women in the country. What's up with that? And where did that come from? Margaret Sanger, 1916, Planned Parenthood International, to eliminate all unwanted black life. A few of you know Eugenics gave birth to Planned Parenthood. Do your research. The library's here. I know y'all got a public library. Racism created Planned Parenthood. Isn't that interesting? We talk about the brothers killing each other on the corner. What about the women snatching the babies out their belly? Ain't that still homicide? No, we can't talk about that. And then we're going to teach. What am I missing? Financial, economic, political, and military. Dietary, nutritional, and medical. Agricultural, agronomical, spirituality, and science of the family community. Our college will rest on them six. We're going to have a farm which is why I don't want no regular school. This is why I'm trying to buy this historically black college. St. Paul's is selling for two and a half million. The auction was today. We had a fundraiser that started May 20th and went to the day we raised $100,000. But we not done. We raised enough to pull the school off the market, 100000 But they're giving me 60 days to come up with the other two million and some change. So guess what all y'all going to do tonight? You're going to go home, and you're going to go to my website, Dr. Umar Johnson School.com. You're going to take out your credit card and you're going to donate something, whatever you can afford. If you can only afford a dollar, you give me a dollar. But some of y'all living real comfortable, so I don't want no damn dollar because I'm going to give it back and smack you. <laughs> you can give me 50, I want 50. You got 100, I want 100. You got 1,000, I want 1,000. Largest donation I got came yesterday from an elder out of St. Louis, Missouri. He gave me $1,200 donation. But I know some people only got five. Only got two, but you give me some. Because our boys need a place of their own, free from special ed, free from exposure, free from discipline. Do you realize that Pennsylvania is in a neck and tie race with Texas? for suspending and expelling the most black boys in this country? Do you know where you live? Black boys are catching hell in these 501 school districts like crazy. That's right. This is up Texas where you live at. Pennsylvania has more prisons, federal prisons, than almost any other state in the Northeast Corridor. All they did was cut Texas and bring it right up here and drop it off. That's the Pennsylvania connection. Remember the Mason Dixon line of the Civil War runs through Pennsylvania. I went to high school in Chambersburg, Scotland School for Veterans Children. Some of y'all remember that? Scotland School for Veterans Children, a military school in Chambersburg, PA that Governor Rendell closed down a couple years ago. That's where I graduated from high school. That's where my ancestor Fred Douglas met James Brown right before the 1859 raid, Harper's Ferry, Virginia. That's where Martin Delaney, grandfather of Pan Africanism, was raised. After his parents escaped from the South, they was going to kill his mother and father to teach him how to read. So we want to give our boys a place of their own, a school designed for them. There will be no out-of-school suspension. Can't be anyway, right, because they live in there with them. Oh, I know how to handle that ass. Get out of here. Your mother ain't here. She cannot. Can't run to that breast. Your minds. We're going to make men. Get them away from these mothers and make men. And ladies, y'all need a break. Let's be honest. Some of y'all burned out. Some of y'all have raised four or five boys in a row. You are tired. Give them to me. I would love that. Oh, Dr. Umar, I'm in special ed. I have a reading disability. I need more help. 
I've been in special ed for eight years and you don't have a special ed program, really? You need help? So guess what I'm going to do for you since you need help? Since you need so much reading help, guess what we're going to do? At the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy for my reading disabled brothers, we're going to have a Saturday school from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. So we can give you all the reading help you need. And then we're going to have a Sunday school. Six in the morning, six at night. Give you all the math help you need. How much you want to bet your son be the best reader in my school in two damn weeks? <laughs> don't bring them excuses to me. You leave that in your house. You're the one who let them get away with them labels. We will not have that nonsense at the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy. No, we won't. We're going to have an aviation academy. We're going to teach the young men how to fly. Airplanes. We're giving them jobs without college. If they want to go to college, we will help them. We will have college prep. We will have a black college tour and a white college tour. Okay? Because some children want to be doctors. That requires college. We're going to support them and make sure they ace that SAT so they can go for free. Some want to be lawyers and psychologists and educators, and we will support them and make sure they ace the SAT so they can get college paid for so you ain't got to flip that bill. So we will have college bound children. But for those who say, Dr. Umar, I don't want to go to college. But I do want to make a decent living. Oh, really? Guess what we're going to send him? Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Thaddeus is Stevens College of Technology. State-run school. Two years, you come out as a licensed plumber, licensed electrician, licensed carpenter, licensed cosmetologist, licensed computer network, licensed HVAC, licensed auto mechanic. Listen to me. One of the biggest mistakes black people made after the Civil Rights Bill of 1964 was we turned our back on the building trades. You know why we turned our back on the building trades? Because once upon a time in America, that's the only thing we was allowed to do. We was never allowed to do nothing else. They didn't let us do white collar. So once we had a chance to go to college, you know what we said? None of our kids ever working no more with their hands. Oh, you following me? That's what we did. It was a mistake. And we walked off the blue collar jobs. And by walking off the blue collar jobs, we left them open for everyone else to dominate. And that's why we look around Island Town, most of the new projects being built with your tax money. Almost no black or Latino labor. Why? Because you ain't got the paperwork. They say you ain't got the paperwork. The certification. Stevens Tech, half the kids go for free. They even pay for your books. Everybody don't need to be at Temple. Everybody don't need to be at the University of Pennsylvania. Everybody don't need to be at IUP, Ohio State. What's wrong with a two-year trade? See, when you have a trade, you can always feed your family. That's right. I'm a psychologist. Ain't no black people hiring no psychologists. <laughs> if white folks ain't hiring, guess what? I'm homeless. You a lawyer? Ain't no black folks hiring no lawyers. To take care of a couple of problems, but not, at, not as a job. We don't have corporations. So most of the stuff we're educated in, if we can't get a job through dominant American society, we are hungry and homeless. But guess what? If you can fix a leaky roof, you can eat forever. You can cut somebody's hair, you can eat forever. You know how to fix a car engine? You can eat forever. So why we got all of our kids thinking you got to wear a white shirt with a nice pretty tie and you're going to call yourself successful? I know carpenters who make more money than surgeons. I know electricians who make more money than engineers. I know painters who make more money than nurses. Give our boys options. Because by telling everybody they got to go to college, you ain't doing nothing but setting them up for jail. Because ain't no jobs after college. This is real life. So in my school, he going to learn how to paint. And he going to learn Mozart. He going to learn how to cut hair. And he can be a philosophy major. He can learn how to fix cars. And he can be a pharmacist. I want to make sure that boy can feed his family if he can't find a job. I got through Millersville University cutting hair. You know why? Because at Scotland School in Chambersburg, they taught us how to cut hair so we can cut the young boys' hair. And that's how I paid a lot of my bills in college. Cutting hair. That's right. You can always get your hustle going when you know how to work with your hands. But for my ladies, I want to be clear where my mom is at. When your daughter show up to the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey Academy for young girls, young African women, she must come with her own hair. There will be no wig, no perm, no process, no straightening comb. 
your hair color. I'm not picking on y'all ladies. Y'all come from another generation. But for the next generation, we're going to fix it. Now, if her hair is naturally curly like the princess I saw here, that's her hair. But we are teaching our girls to respect and love and honor who they are as black women and stop trying to look like everybody else's women. We're switching that up. If anybody's interested in working at the school, send your resume to FDMG Resumes at gmail.com. Now, some of y'all are probably saying to yourself, I'm not a certified teacher, Dr. Umar. Well, we're talking about a private school. Private school cert is different from public school cert. Public school cert, you got to pass the prices. Private school cert, you ain't got to pass the prices. For example, in Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, if you want to be a private school teacher, you got to have a bachelor's degree and 18 credits in the subject you want to teach. So let's say you got a brother who got a degree in communication. But he got 18 credits in history. Do you know he can be a certified private school teacher in history? That's how easy it is for private school. I got to look at Virginia's code because if we're lucky enough to obtain St. Paul's College, we'll be in Virginia. And some of y'all saying, I got to send my son all the way down there. Yup. Virginia ain't that far. Take the ride. It ain't that often. Come pick them up Christmas, Thanksgiving. I ain't going to keep them for the holidays because I know y'all love them holidays. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with him? Going to Virginia. I had to drive to Scotland. Scotland from Philly is about three and a half hours. I miss my Scotland days. I have a whole other family because of that residential experience. One of my closest buddies is getting married August 8th, and I'm going to be in his wedding. Those bonds you forge in the residential schools, you have them for life. It's a second family. Well, my son might not like it. That's because you spoiled his ass. But once I get him off your breast, he'll be fine. In fact, he might not even want to come home. He's going to love it so much. Mom, I'm staying. I'm cool. Cool. Dr. Umar, we cool. So think about it. You will save a lot of money too, because you're gonna have to worry about buying him Ed Jordans every time they come out because the air pressure says he gotta look like everybody else. In my school, they're gonna have uniforms on. They're gonna be all that Michael Jordan stuff. Okay? The sad part is some don't even consider the school because you're so used to crippling your kids that you'd rather keep them with you and kill them and send them somewhere else so they can live. We want to have a clothing manufacturing program at the school where we teach the kids how to make their own clothing. I, I met a brother who knows how to make sneakers. He knows how to make shoes. We want to teach our children how to make shoes. Imagine if we teach our girls how to make pocketbooks. You know how much y'all spend on Louis Vuitton? <laughs> also, people, we won't just need teachers. This is a residential college. This is a school for our children. We're going to need secretaries, counselors, social workers, security guards, bus drivers, lunchroom personnel, house parents to live in the dorms with the children. So if, you, if you're interested in moving to Outback, Virginia, because Lawrenceville is in the middle of nowhere, that's, that's how I want it, away from all the conditioning and basketball games, send me your resume, fdmgresumes at gmail.com. Come to you in one sec. And then make sure you go to drumarjohnson.com and donate tonight. And don't donate once. You keep on coming back, y'all, because if we don't get that money, we're going to sell that college. Our kids need it. It's 137 acres of a historically black college that we're going to turn into a residential school for black boys, and then we're going to build another dorm for the girls. So we'll be co ed in a few years. The gymnasium is there. They got a brand new student center built from the ground that has a bowling alley in the inside. The cosmetology department is already sitting there waiting for us because we will have a natural hair care academy. Mm -hmm. I said natural. Happy to be natural. Happy to be natural. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ancestors! Yes. We have a gymnasium, state of the art. The dorms are there. The infirmary is there. The library is there, beautiful library, two, three levels of the library, lecture hall, auditorium, and brothers and sisters, it's like 15 builders on that campus. And they ask for two and a half million. That is a steal for a college. Morris Brown in Atlanta just sold for 14 million. They only charging us two and a half for everything. Give me the money. <laughs> if anybody got a phone number to Oprah or Jay-Z, 
<laughs> Call him up. I heard Dr. Dre gave the University of Southern California a thirty million dollar donation. What? How in the hell? Yeah, yeah. You give a predominantly white university that is already filthy rich thirty million dollars when Cheney is in trouble, Southern is in trouble, Central is in trouble, Lincoln's struggling. How do you do something like that, Dr. Dre? Oh, I forgot, but you did used to call yourself a Negro with an attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Young lady. The proceeds to my book goes towards my rent. <laughs> okay? But let me add something to that. And this is what I want to add to that. Guess who pays all the expenses involved in anything associated with your school if you don't give me the money? Guess who laps it fall on? So do those books directly go to the school? No. Do they indirectly go to the school? Hell yeah. When I got to pay my lawyer $2,500 next week so he can do settlement on his contract with the college, guess who's pocket that coming out of? Mine. So indirect, directly, no, indirectly, hell to the year. <laughs> y'all feeling me on that? I'm the bottom line. What y'all don't give me, I got to take it out of my own pocket. In fact, I want to even see, when I talk to the president of the college, I'm thinking about moving down there. Because one thing I do like about the college, they got a beautiful president's house. <laughs> so I'm thinking about moving down to the president's house so I can take my mortgage money that I pay now and use that towards the fundraiser. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I'm trying to go straight hard on this, y'all, because our boys deserve this. How many of y'all in the schools fighting special ed, fighting disciplined school, and fighting juvenile incarceration? Imagine a school just for your boy. Don't get me wrong, first 30 days, mama, I want to come home. Dr. Umar got me cleaning toilets and stuff. But after 30 days, mama, I'm cool. Um, I said, can you stay home? I'm straight. Excellent. And the final analysis is going to be pre-K to 12. In the final analysis. Oh, we're taking it from pre-K to 12. And then guess what else we're going to do? After we got the pre-K to 12 locked down, I'm going to have a recovery academy for African American Latino children, 17 to 27, who have made a bad turn in life. Might have dropped out of school, might have got on drugs, might have been to jail, and they just out there drifting the homeless, don't know what to do. I'm going to save them from homicide. I'm going to bring them in, put them in the dorm. We're going to educate them, teach them some skills, and put them out there with a business plan so they can make a way for themselves. And then we're going to do an adult education academy. Then we're going to have an academy for young ladies who got babies. Okay? So they can come and stay on campus and get their education, but they're going to have to sign a contract that say you won't have no more. Not on my damn campus. This is not the twerking center. Okay? Questions? My brother, and then my brother right there. I got two questions. Sure. The first question... I was trying to, I wanted to know about the common core curriculum when you were talking about the schools. Mm -hmm. All right, I've been looking into that. I don't know it completely, but I know it ain't good. I know it's completely dumbing down our kids. Two plus Every two couple, ain't four no more. Right. It's a dictated curriculum. But this is what this is about. Every couple years, people come up with new schemes to get paid off miseducation. None of it works. It's about money. The common core will be thrown, listen to me well. In 10 years, it'll be gone. After the people who made it got paid a couple hundred million. Are y'all following me? Education is the biggest racket in hustle. That's why people like to make it look like teaching a kid how to read is real difficult, don't they? Oh, you need this program. No, you need this program. My ancestor, Frederick Douglass, taught himself how to read. It could have been murdered had he been found out doing it. There was no special ed in 1818. So special ed and Harriet Tubman didn't need special ed in order to learn how to read. Why the hell your child needed in Allentown 2014? Not specific learning disability, sloppy and lazy as hell disability. But I'm not a fan of it. I'm still studying it myself. But I know these curriculums. It's all money and nonsense. You don't need none of them. And the beauty about my school is it's private. People keep trying to give you own another charter. Why don't you open up a charter? They would love to give you a charter school in every school district in Pennsylvania. I know they would. But not for the good reasons. You know why they would give me a charter school in Allentown? It set me up to fail. This is what they do. They give you a charter school, let you open up a charter school, because by opening up your charter school, you're going to shut down a couple public schools because you're going to de depopulate the school. Are y'all following me now? 
charter schools depopulate public, and then after you do that, a couple years later, you get a letter in the mail talking about something, your test scores are too low. We're putting you in no child left behind, corrective action. You ain't made AYP. Two years later, they shut you down and take your school from you. I don't want no charter school. I don't want the state telling me what to teach, how to teach, what not to teach. I'm not taking his test. I'm going to have my own test. And because I'm a private school, I ain't got to take nobody's graduation test. Look at that. These private schools in Pennsylvania, you think they worry about Keystone? Hell no, because when you're private, you ain't got to take Keystone. Do it yourself. The problem with black folks is we don't want to do it ourselves, because we want to use our money on vacation and parties and twerking and pocketbooks and jeans and rims and Thames and chicken wings. That's right. You got enough money in our town, you can build a school for your own children. But you got better things to do with your money. Post-traumatic slavery disease. And the only way we're going to undo the post-traumatic slavery disease conditioning of modern-day Africans is to do what? Separate your children from you before you contaminate them with your sick thoughts. And that's why the school is going to be residential, because if the child stays in the house with you, you will infect the next generation with the same sickness that binds us. Next question. My next question is, is this. Could you talk about a revolutionary movement? We are talking about this the entire social order mm -hmm. of our condition. They ain't going to like that. And we know from the past history of mm -hmm. our struggle, Black Panthers, Black Liberation Movement, we Cointel Pro ran through them. And I, what I want to know is what, what what are the plans to prevent the next point to pro from disrupting the You can't prevent it. You live in a territory controlled by your historical oppressor. You can't prevent it. When you stand up and speak like this, you do it with full informed consent that you know you might be next. That's the way Malcolm lived, that's the way King lived, Garvey, Patrice Lumumba, Steve Biko, everybody you know. There are no, in, no safeguards when you speak out the truth. You have to resolve yourself to the fact that the principles you stand for are more important than your life. And if the principles you stand for are not more important than your life, you are a sellout waiting to happen. Because the minute you get threatened with loss of life, job, leisure, or income, you're going to betray the struggle because you wasn't more committed to it than your own convenience. That's how sellouts are born. People who think they're for the people, but they don't know themselves well enough to know they're really not. Jesse Jackson didn't think he would sell out when he was 20. Al Sharpton didn't think he would be a no good Uncle Tom when he was 20. But they became that because they really didn't understand that they really wasn't in this for the people. They were in it for themselves all along. And when they got put in a position where they could have went to jail or been assassinated, they chose to work with the system. See, the condition doesn't make you. It reveals you to yourself. If 10 years from now you find out Dr. Umar is working with the system and renouncing everything I said, then you know I was a turncoat from the minute you met me in Island Town. You don't become a sellout. You already was one. You see, now me as a Pan-Africanist and a Garveyite, I believe in repatriation. If you want to build independent, successful black communities, at some point you're going to have to repatriate them to a black country. That means we have to build international relations with the governments in Africa, the governments in the South Pacific, the governments in Southeast Asia, the governments in Central South America, and in the Caribbean. White America will never tolerate black power. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma three weeks ago. I was the keynote speaker. Y'all know what happened in Tulsa? 1920, the Tulsa race riots, when the government helped the Ku Klux Klan burn and kill independent black folks because they were more successful than the white folks there. And when I say white folks, I'm not categorically talking about every single white person. Talking about the dominant attitude of members of the race. Not everybody is of that sort. And I'm speaking of the general disposition. Okay. Wilmington, North Carolina, Rosewood, Florida. What have they done to every single black self sustaining community in America? They burned it to the ground. They will do it again. Which means the minute I get that school up and running, I know time is limited. The minute I get it up, I'm already talking to the government of Ghana, talking to the government of South Africa. I'm talking to Jamaica. I'm talking to St. Croix. I want to bring my school to your country because we ain't safe here. But I understand. The problem with a lot of people, they love America so much, they don't want to accept the fact that you can't do what you claim you really want to do for your people here. It ain't going to happen. It's the reality. 
But the Marcus Garvey said, the Negro is not careful. He will drink in all the poison of Western civilization and die from the effects of it. Mm -hmm. You are addicted and addicted to American culture. And I'm going to detox your babies. <laughs> I'm going to detox her from table sugar. I'm going to detox her from corn syrup. I'm going to detox her from caffeine. I'm going to detox her from high fructose corn syrup. I'm going to detox her from Superman and scandal. <laughs> they will not be allowed to watch that garbage in my school. Some of you sisters should be ashamed of yourself. Number one show for black women is a show where the black woman plays a bed wench to the most powerful white man on the planet. I thought we'd been there, done that. <laughs> questions. We got any more questions? Sir. No, that's only in state regulated academic areas. Let me give you an example. You want to come to my school and you want to teach farming. Farming ain't regulated. Are you following me? So you can be the farming instructor. She coming to my school, she gonna teach natural hair care. That ain't regulated because she ain't dealing with permanent clippers. You follow what I'm saying? So she can teach that. The person who's gonna teach the uh, clothing manufacturing curriculum, they don't need no cert because that's not regulated by the state. Only the things that the State Department of Education regulates will you need a cert for. I'm a certified person. Oh, fitness? Yeah, you can do that without no extra paperwork. And we want to have that too, because when your sons come home, they're going to be cut. Like, damn, how much you listening, son? 255? <laughs> and also, uh, do you have anybody in the school? For the school, not in PA, no. If any of y'all want to, let me give y'all my contact information. Okay. Okay. You know what? Everybody take out their cell phone. I want you to join my text message club. Take out your cell phone. And this doesn't cost you any money. I pay for it, not you. This is a way that you get all my updates of what Dr. Umar is doing. You're going to open up a fresh text message. I want you to start a fresh text message. And you're going to text Dr. Umar. D-R-U-M-A-R. -R. That's the message. D-R-U-M-A-R. -R, all capitals. No period, no space. All together. You're going to text it just like this. D-R-U-M-A-R. -R. And you're going to text that to 36,000. Dr. Umar is the message. 36,000 is the recipient. You hit send. You're going to get an automated message back. that says type a capital Y to confirm. You're going to type a capital Y to confirm. Hit send again. That's your second send. This is your first send. Capital Y is your second send, and you'll be enrolled. You'll get all my radio show interviews, updates about the school fundraiser, where I'm going to be. It comes to your phone. I did this because a lot of people ain't on Facebook and Twitter and all of that kind of stuff. So this way you get everything automatically sent to you. Okay, so you want to text Dr. Umar to 36,000. You are going to go to Dr. Umar Johnson School. Dot com to make your donation. There's also a five minute video of me at the campus telling you what I'm going to do with the campus. Okay, so watch the video. Maybe after you watch that, you'll give me a little bit more money. <laughs> Our personal website where you can purchase the book if you don't get it today, but it's going to take me a couple weeks to send it to you because I'm always on the road. DrUmarJohnson.com. My personal cell phone. This is how you can stay in touch with me. Remember, the text club, you only receive on the text club. Text club, you only receive, okay? If you need to send something to me, you text it to my phone. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Let's say you need me to look at some paperwork for your baby. You got to fax that. If you can email it, you email it. And my email address is just like my website, but you add Yahoo. So email is Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo. Fax number, if you got a hard copy evaluation, you need me to look, Dr. Umar, can you look at this letter the principal sent home? 
215-827-5404 is the fax. 215-827-5404 is the fax. Okay? That's the contact information there. Resumes. And some of y'all might know people who need to send me a resume. Make sure they psychologically stable now. I don't need nobody shooting at my camps. FDMG resumes. FDMG resumes. FDMG is the acronym for Fred Douglas Marcus Garden. FDMG resumes at gmail.com. Okay? I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, all under Umar Johnson. Facebook, I'm under Dr. Umar E. Fatunde, my African name. But if you go to drumarjohnson.com or drumarjohnsonschool.com, you can connect straight to my Twitter and Facebook page from my website. We're going to wrap up in the next 10 minutes because I want to leave time. If anybody decides to buy a book, I want to be able to sign them at the end. So we got 15 more minutes for questions. Anything you want to ask? Uh, I'm not aware of any colleges that offer that type of price. Give me a name of a school for sale in Pierre. Okay. It'd be it'd be more expensive though, because I actually have an architect who's designing me a school built from the ground. I don't think I'm going to find something better than St. Paul's at this time. You know what I mean? Because I want it to be residential. I do have some people checking out some stuff in Jersey. There's some stuff in New Jersey. I haven't found anything in PA that was available that offered residential possibility. I was looking. Now, if any of y'all know of that, let me know. Because if by chance we don't get St. Paul's, I do want some other options. See, I know of some residential schools, treatment centers, hospitals. It needs to be zoned for dormitory space. So it needs to be a place that was... People can sleep there, form a school for the deaf and blind. Anything that's shut down that's large, got some land around it, and you got to do farming. I don't want no regular neighborhood schools. I'm dating over here. But if y'all know something like that, it might be something in Pennsylvania, because Pennsylvania got a lot of stuff. Yeah. So if y'all know something, let me know. If the college requires them, yeah, yeah, whatever the college requires, I have to, they'll have to take. Oh, we're going to prepare them. They're going to be prepared either way, because they might decide to go to college later. You follow what I'm saying? They're going to be prepared for everything. I just want to make sure they understand that going to college doesn't guarantee success, and that they understand that you can be successful without college. You follow me? So yeah, they're going to get all that. They're going to have to go into college stores and everything. They will be exposed to everything. There will be no exemptions to that. Okay. My brother. Say that. I didn't hear you. Oh, from folks who might be opposed to what I'm doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Social hypnosis. Oh, I've already been getting attention. They're already out there. I got it. I got my hands. <laughs> but you need some of them now. They keep you sharp. But I know you're absolutely correct. The resistance is going to be there. You just got to move on despite it. No struggle, no progress. That's what Fred Douglas says, you know. So uh, you're correct. It's already there. It's already there. But I think once people begin to see what we're doing, our people, they'll support it. You know what I mean? And I think even when other folks see that we ain't training them to hate, we ain't training them to shoot or kill, we're just training them to be successful children, successful adults, I think all that stuff will subside. I just think when people hear me, they get all types of notions about what I'm really about that aren't correct because people are not used to a, a black man, especially not one with PhD, being so unapologetically African and not being a hater of other people. We're not used to it. So people got to get used to me because I'm a rare breed. 
Amen. but I'm going to breed thousands of them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, Queen. Harlem School Zone, Jeffrey. I respect him what he's doing. I can't give you an honest assessment because I've never been inside. I do know teachers who have went there, have worked there, and I think I met a few parents who had children who attended. And allegedly, from what they're telling me, the the the, the, the public reputation is a farce. I'm being told that our black boys are catching hell in Harlem Children's Home that they are being special educated in the Harlem Children's Home, that they are being ADHD to death and put on psychiatric meds, and that black teachers who stand up for black boys are being uh, fired from their jobs. I met a couple. I don't know if it's true, but I've been told this by several people. It could be wrong. Could be. But that's all I can say on that. But whatever he's doing is not a school on the planet that will be able to touch my students after two years after we open. And I will be looking for them. I'll be starting trouble. Where's the best school in China? We want to challenge you to a debate. Where's the best school in Pennsylvania? Your kids are smart? Okay, let's have a math contest. I'm going to show people that education in this country, the quality is garbage. And also in my school, the teachers will not have a union. I am the union. If you don't teach, your ass get fired. One of the biggest problems in Pennsylvania is that you can't fire teachers even when they can't teach. What kind of a job is it that you have your job even if everybody knows you can't do it? Just because you've been doing it for three years. Y'all know that's the hustle. The American Federation of Teachers, National Education Association, they are the dictators of public ed. If a teacher has been teaching for three years, they cannot be fired unless they do something absolutely ridiculous. But they cannot be fired for being a bad teacher. That's why Americans are at the bottom of the list when compared to other industrialized nations when it comes to academics. You cannot have unions. That's why charter schools do better a lot of times because charter schools ain't got no union. If you don't teach here, you get fired. But in the public school, you can't get fired. Breeds laziness. Queen. Is there a program up and running for our, our young men in black men in the school that helps uh, promote not going to get a piece of paper and just never looking at the future of your life? Like what you're speaking, not the school that's. Anything going on in Philly, Jersey? It might anything? be. I travel so much, I can't really say offhand. There's probably a couple things out there. Um, I'm going to have to think on that. One thing we need to do, y'all, and I know Brother Muhammad got that sign up back there, right? If you didn't sign up, listen to me. Listen to me well. <laughs> the Allentown Independent Black Parent Association is going to have seven committees, y'all. Special Ed Committee to help fight and protect our special ed kids, a discipline committee to help fight against unfair suspicion and expulsion in your district. We're going to have a policy committee to change the local regulations that are disproportionately affecting our kids. We're going to have a finance committee to investigate where the money is going in Allentown because it ain't going on our babies. We're going to have a social committee to support our single parents. We're going to have a homeschool committee to work with the parents who want to homeschool their children. And we're going to have a parent advocacy committee. I'm going to come back to Allentown and I'm going to train some of y'all to be parent advocates. No parent should go to a school meeting by yourself. You should always have another parent for backup. Why? Because schools lie, schools manipulate, schools intimidate, school bully. So I got to train some of y'all in educational law. If he got to go to a school meeting about his son, he need to be right with him as his advocate. When the school starts saying stuff to him that he knows as the advocate is illegal, he's going to say it. You cannot tell this parent that they must put their children on drugs or they can't come to school. You cannot deny a child education for any reason. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Most of our parents don't know the law, so they need other parents who know it, who can go and whip them, because you know what they do. You go into a school meeting, you in there to talk about your son, they come in with 15 members of the school team. For one black mom, fathers, they do you the same way, right? You in there by yourself, they got principal, vice principal, principal intern, social worker, nurse, school psychologist, reading specialist. Window washer, basketball coach, bus driver, they got like 15 people. And why do they bring that many people? To make you think you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, I don't think my son got a reading disability. Oh, but I've been teaching for three years. I know better than you. I've taught you, remember? And I find it very appalling that you would even suggest that I have it out for your son. I love him like he was my son. 
Uh, really, it ain't that bad. My son was on. He talks to himself now, but you know, <laughs> you can't do that. And then you come out to school and end up doing something you ain't want to do because you got bullied. So we got to have parent advocates. If you're interested, make sure you sign up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Brother Muhammad. We want to set up an email list so all y'all can get the email. And when I'm coming back to Island Town to do that training, or when I'm coming back to Island Town to do the next lecture. Y'all want to get it anyway if you're in my textbook. But just in case if you're not, we want that on there. So if I need to send you emails, longer information, we have a way to contact you. Those of y'all want to help me with the fundraiser, please let me know we need to do that. Because the school will be international. So the kids can come from anywhere in America and anywhere on earth. We will have brothers there from London, from Africa, from Jamaica, from South America. Imagine your son being at a school with other black boys who are representative of every black nation on this planet. People get a first class education. That's what we built. We got to change the paradigm for black people. December of 2015, next December, next December, what do we celebrate in December of 2015? We celebrate 150 years since slavery. Slavery ended in, thir in 1865 with the 13th Amendment. In December of 1865 with the 13th Amendment. Emancipation Proclamation ain't free nobody, okay? It was the 13th Amendment. We celebrate 150 years in the 13th Amendment next December. 150 years, and look where the hell we still at. We ain't went nowhere. We got a lot of basketball players. We got reality TV shows making black women look like trifling women who can't find husbands. We got a lot of Tyler Perry movies that's making you hate the black marriage. We got a whole bunch of sickness and filth, but where's our schools? Where's our hospitals? Where's our gas stations? Where's our factories? Where's our jobs for our children? We ain't got no infrastructure, y'all. 150 years after Harriet Tubman, after Frederick Douglass, after Sojourner Truth, look where we are. And we got to change that. And I'm going to do a little bit I can do while I still got breath in my lungs. And the way I'm going to make my contribution is by giving our kids the school that they need. Because I know you cannot change any problem black people have until you change the way black people think. And I'm going to do it with that school. So whatever y'all can give, donate. If you want to mail a check, the address is on the website. You can mail me a check or money order. And if you got your checkbook tonight, pass on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, having said that, I want to thank everybody for coming out. It's been an honor. Let's do it again sometime. So I got my contact info. If you plan on purchasing a book, the good sister will take care of that for you up there. And then you can come up here and I'll sign. If you need to use a credit card, I can do that for you up there as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, the honest mom, my brother. How we doing, princess?